everyone and welcome to another video. So this is all the stuff that I got for the last half of December. There's a bit here to get through but hopefully this video shouldn't be too too long and I'll just get straight into it and I hope you guys enjoy. Now first of all I only got one figure for these two weeks and that is the final Love Live 1 7th scale from Alter. This is ISA Ellie. Um, and she is absolutely beautiful. I really, really love her costume, outfit, whatever you want to call it. I think it's probably the most lavish and, and highly, um, detailed of the group, by far, really. Um, it's just a beautiful, beautiful design. I think, uh, it, she was really one... A strong one for Alter to finish with and definitely a good addition to the cast. She's just absolutely beautiful. Next with the manga is actually a much older title and this isn't the entirety of it but I did get a solid chunk of the series from a local seller. Um, I do have two more volumes still to pick up and they really are the rarest to get but Hopefully I'll run across them sometime in the near future. Uh, but this was a series I've wanted for a very long time. And that is Reiko Shimizu's Moonchild. So we have volume one. Volume two. Now, as you can probably tell, uh, volume three, this was released by CMX. Um... I think 2008-ish, volume 4, volume 5, volume 6, volume 7, volume 8, now, volume 9 is the first volume I'm missing, so then I have volume 10, volume 11, volume 12 is the second book I'm missing, and then volume 13 is the final book. So, yes, very happy to have this older shoujo series in my possession. It's one that I've heard many good things about for a very long time. It's the sort of title I've always been very intrigued about. Uh, and the price of these particular volumes was too good to pass up, so although it wasn't the entirety of it, um, I just couldn't, couldn't skip over it, even though I haven't really been buying a lot of manga for this last month or so, aside from pre-orders. Hopefully I will find the other two volumes somewhere, somehow, for less than $100, uh, but we'll see. We have the second volume of To Your Eternity by Yoshitoki Oima. Um, if you're not reading this series, you should definitely give it a try, and not just because of Oima's previous series, A Silent Voice. This is very... Um, very different to that. It's sort of a somewhat sci-fi fantasy historical setting. Um, it really changes the characters a lot. It, it's sort of, um, rather than being completely character focused like A Silent Voice was, the characters really are facilitated more as a storytelling device rather than necessarily um, characters to follow. So, And with this second volume it's even more apparent. Uh, the first volume did have elements of that, but with this volume and sort of what happens in it, you can see the trend of how the story might go. It's incredibly intriguing and I'm interested in seeing how Oima actually handles this topic and and uses her main character to explore the setting more as well as the people within the world. It's it's very interesting and I highly, highly, highly recommend it um, if you're not reading this already. 
then we have the third volume of Satoru Nora's Golden Kamui, a very fun seinen, although I think from the premise you wouldn't necessarily think it would be fun, but it's got a very good balance between the action and the humorous character moments. I think it's definitely one to check out if you're a seinen action fan. It's got a pretty great cast of characters. Our main group who we're following, and really our main pair, um, is <laughs> has very good repertoire and very good chemistry. They work well uh, against each other. And it's one that I sort of always want to see where it's going. It's really, really, really strong. It's one of the best new titles from um, this year, or that debuted this year. There was some amazing manga that came out this year, or debuted. Uh, if you haven't seen my video on it, uh, it was actually the last one I did. I'll link it in the description below. But Golden Kamui was on that list for, I think, pretty understandable reasons. It's one that I think a lot of people can enjoy. It's very um, accessible. And uh, yeah, it's just really, really fun. I think that's the best word to describe it, is just, um, yeah, entertaining. It's a good read. Next we have the second volume of Sweet Blue Flowers, Takakoshi Mura's Yuri series, being released by Viz. Another series that I've absolutely adored this year. I cannot believe we're finally getting this in print. It's been such a long time coming, really. Um, definitely one to pick up if you're a Yuri fan. And even if you're not, I think it's a good one to check out, especially if you're not necessarily um, sure where to start. I think it's a fairly good starting series because it handles um, more so than just having a lot of Yuri tropes, which it does follow certain tropes very closely. Um, it also explores sort of the realities of lesbian relationships or LGBT relationships in general very uh, much more than a typical Yuri series does, like Shimura's other work, Wandering Sun. So definitely, definitely recommend it if that's the sort of thing you're into as well. Um, yeah, fantastic, fantastic book. Then we have the seventh omnibus of Princess Jellyfish by Akiko Higashimura. This volume came out, I think, um, last month, but my copy got lost in the mail. I never got it, so this is actually a replacement from Book Depository. They were very good about it. Um, so it was a little annoying having to wait so long, although I have read the chapters in this omnibus already. Uh, and this one is probably the best... Um, in terms of actually driving home a lot of the realities of the fashion industry. Um, the latter half of this omnibus, so really volumes, or volume 14, um, tackles how, how you present yourself is how people think of you, which is something that Princess Jellyfish has always sort of addressed, but with a certain character who's introduced in the last volume, I think. Um, it really emphasizes how clothing makes how other people perceive you, um, how a huge multinational fashion brand can start from something very simple and very classic, like a white, white button-down shirt, um, because Fashion, although a lot of people think of it as this constantly changing, crazy um, sort of beast that pe you always have to be at the cutting edge, there's always ridiculous things coming out on the catwalks, that sort of thing. Classic pieces like a white button-down shirt, black pants, the little black dress will always be relevant and make you make your image look a certain way so people will perceive you a certain way. Um, as I've mentioned, pretty much every time I get a volume of this series, I have 
family with a fashion background. Both my parents were in the fashion industry. And it's something that has always been emphasized to myself is how you dress is, is really how people think of you their, the rest of their lives. Um, that first impression is so important. And certain events in this within a flashback really drive that that idea home. Um, so again, like I say with every volume, Higashimura really has understood and captured this fickle idea of self-image and the fashion industry and sort of the, the trends and the changes that occurs over it. And just on that alone, this is definitely worth a read. But in addition to that, it's a great, great, funny, likable story about um, embracing your passions. It's got a wonderful cast of characters, both male and female, who have very interesting personalities, but are all very likable. And you can understand why they're passionate about the things they are. And it's never mean-hearted or cruel, unlike a lot of sort of uh, comedy series that you find in manga, especially in anime. It's, it's very, very welcoming and it embraces all of its weird characters to its fullest. So yes, it's definitely a great series to pick up. We only have two volumes left, one more omnibus and the final volume has additional pages, I believe, but um, it's really only the single volume. Uh, so, very, very close to the end. I'm going to be very sad when it's over, but all good things must come to an end, as they say. This is actually some volumes I got for a Secret Santa trade-off. Um, it was actually held by Apollo Grey, who, if you don't know, is another manga tuber, makes lots of videos. Um, but my actual Secret Santa was uh, Gear 3rd manga, whom, again, manga tuber, I guess? Um, two of which are actual volumes that I were, was wanting, the other being sort of his joke, um, mostly I think because there's no gift um, or message service you can put with Book Depository, which is where he bought these from, but also he's very he's a very dedicated memer and I have to appreciate that, that he would actually spend the additional money on uh, this third volume, which is the first volume of Fairy Tale. Not something I'll personally be reading, but it's something a lot of people dislike, um, including Gear. He makes a lot of jokes at, a, at its expense. So I, I mean, when I saw this, I knew immediately who had gifted these to me. So in that sense, it was incredibly um, both appropriate and effective. <laughs> but as for my actual gifts that he got me, there are two uh, Yoshihiro Tatsumi volumes. Uh, the first being The Pushman and Other Stories. And the second being Abandoned the Old in Tokyo. Now these are Gekiga, and if you don't know what Gekiga is, um, it was actually Tatsumi who, who coined the phrase. It means dramatic pictures, and it was started as sort of a comparison to manga, which really is regarded as the whimsical pictures. So it wanted to be uh, they wanted their works to be taken more seriously than manga at the time. Um, so really it's sort of like the difference between comics and graphic novels, <laughs> that sort of terminology. Um, I have wanted Tatsumi manga for a long, long, long time, or Gekiga I should say. Um, there are a couple other titles I'm wanting get to get of his. But these two were really some of, like, at the top of my list, and thank you very much, Gear, for the gift, because uh, I don't know when I would have personally gotten these volumes. They were sort of on the priority list way down the line, but now I've gotten them, 
They were both wonderful and I hope you enjoyed your secret Santa present. It wasn't for me personally, but yes, I hope that you got something that you wanted and enjoyed because, uh, yeah. We've got the most recent volume of the Bakno Light novel, uh, 1933 First the Slash Cloudy Terrainy. Um, so this is really just the first half of this story arc. It really focuses on Tick, who works for the Gandors, as well as Maria, who also works for the Gandors. Isaac and uh, Isaac, Isaac and Maria, as always. Chane has a very large part in it, as well as Dallas Genoad. Um, yeah, there's some interesting stuff going on. Jacuzzi and his gang are back in the story as of this book, which is always a great thing to see. It's interesting um, reading these characters past the point of where you would have watched the anime. And there's no end to very interesting conversations and interactions and just scenarios. Um, it's really very good and it does sort of it immediately follow the fourth book which was um something in dominoes like dice and dominoes um because the fifth book was as I probably mentioned when I got it actually the first volume to be set in the quote-unquote current age which was 2001 uh, this returns us back to the 1930s, and really, it's a shift in the story, not only because it is past where the anime adapted, but it also is a shift historically because Prohibition was changing, the Mafia and other groups, their power was sort of fluctuating over that, that pe period, because obviously without prohibition, there was no need for bootlegging and illegal bars and or speakeasies I should say. So it's it was it's interesting. It's an interesting time. There's a lot of interesting stuff going on and I am eagerly looking forward to book seven. Finally we have some art books. The first one being 2007 2017, which is actually a fan book. It's not really an art book. Um, but it's a 10th anniversary special fan book for Cole Yonada. I posted some pictures of this on my, um, I'm trying to see what's appropriate, what I can open for this. I don't know, Yonada's stuff can be a little bit risque. There we go. The first half is pretty much just colored pieces like these. All of her work is so beautiful um for all of her series the later half is there's some short manga and then there's also um interview stuff and character rankings and character profiles so a whole bunch of fan stuff none of which i can read but this is really the collective artworks from Yonada, and I'm a big Yonada fan, so it was really a no-brainer. Um, yeah, 10th anniversary of her works, so yeah, if you're a fan, this is probably a good time to pick it up. There's a, been a lot of events this year for her titles, um, this sort of being the culmination of those, and you can get it on Amazon in Japan. Um, pretty easily. It's not super expensive either. So yeah, check it out if you're a fan and uh, yeah. Finally, an actual art book or illustration book and that is Pseudomorph of Love by Ichikawa Haruko. So if you're not, don't immediately recognize her work, she is the mangaka of Land of the Lustrous. And her artwork is beautiful. It is mainly lustrous stuff as expected, but it is uh, it does contain stuff from her other works as well. Um, although Land of the Lustrous really is her 
most, I think her longest series. Uh, and you can, as you can see, it has black and white stuff as well as the colored stuff. This is other works that she's done. I really, really love her art style. I think it's very unique and uh, has this sort of whimsical quality to it. It's very beautiful. Um, it's just, yeah, all around gorgeous. And I cannot recommend this enough if you're a fan of her stuff. Um, it's, again, this one's more expensive than the fan book, understandably, because it's a lot bigger and it is actual art book, but definitely worth it if you're a fan of her work. The front has all these embellished gold bits. The title plate is embellished. It's just overall beautiful. And I'm so, so, so happy that I was able to get a second printing of this because the first printing sold out very very quickly and yes that's everything i got for this last half of december this is a little bit early but uh the 31st is the sunday um so no mail for me so this is pretty everything that i got um i hope everyone has a fantastic new year's eve new year 2018 is fast approaching I am hoping to do a complete collection video, whether that be a room tour or just sort of a larger collection overview. I'm not sure yet, but look for that in the next week or so. I want to start the year off productively. <laughs> um, but yes, thank you guys so, so much for watching. As for what next year holds... I don't know. Um, my video schedule will be a little bit iffy for the end of January, beginning of February, just because I will be overseas traveling. So hopefully that doesn't mess you guys up too much. But in any case, it should otherwise be totally normal. I'm hoping to do more, vi more different types of videos next year. Um, and amazingly, I actually did finish all of my titles that I wanted to collect for this year, um, or the Apollo Grey's Completion Challenge. I can't believe I actually managed that. That was pretty impressive, if I do say so myself. Um, as for the collection and myself personally, I'm so happy how this last year has gone. Um, if you're a newcomer to my channel, November, December of 2016 was really when I changed how I was collecting things and the direction this um, collection was going in regards to what I bought and how I supported titles and how I collected. And I think that shift really helped me to ascertain what I was doing with, with these things, why I was collecting, how I was collecting, and how I was interacting with the community at, at large, and how I was enjoying the, these things, manga, anime, etc. Um, I think it's been a really positive change over this past year. In the upcoming year, I hope it gets even better. Thankfully, I'm at the point now where as for particular reduction of the collection, there's not too, too much that I still need to sell or donate. Um, it's at the point where I've got pretty much only things that I really love and want to reread or rewatch. Um, so again, another huge positive for me. And I hope that I can continue to encourage that mindset with other collectors and, and you wonderful people who watch my videos. Um, over this next year because collecting is a huge commitment. It's very um, time consumptive as well as monetarily <laughs> high. Um, it's not an easy thing to get into and there's a lot of pressure to have very large collections. Mine is just one example of one that is very very big but what you don't see behind a large collection like this is the amount of work put into earning the money to get it, as well as the time. Um, the My collection's 10 years old, and I hope to emphasize that a bit more with this coming year, and how I 
particularly collect and how um, collecting can be done, how you can prioritize things or really ascertain why you like certain titles, what you want to keep supporting and that sort of thing. Um, and hopefully we have some wonderful new manga titles coming in 2018 as well. There are several that I'm already excited for. Things like um, Hiromura Arakawa's Silver Spoon as well as the Full Metal Alchemist re-releases. Um, hopefully Rose of Versailles as well as plenty others from all of the publishers. There's been some great licenses um, from this last year coming. So yes, we have a lot to look forward to as a community in 2018. I personally have a lot to look forward to in 2018 as an individual. And I hope you guys have a lot to look forward to as as watchers of my channel. And I hope to, to uh, fulfill your expectations of me and of this channel. But thank you guys, as always, for watching. I appreciate it so, so much. Um, have a wonderful end of the year, a happy New Year's, and I'll see you in 2018, guys. Bye till then.